We all know that split ends are an indicator that your hair is damaged, but what are they and can you treat them? I'm explaining it all in this video. Hi, I'm Dr. Sam Ellis, and I'm a board certified medical and cosmetic dermatologist in Northern California. I'm here to help you understand your skin and your hair and your nails, and really to help you find products that work for you. So if that sounds good, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So the dermatologic term for split ends is called trichoptilosis. Split ends or trichoptilosis are known as an acquired hair shaft abnormality. So the hair shaft refers to the specific strands of hair, and you can have congenital abnormalities where there are little breaks or structural abnormalities in the hair. And then you can have acquired hair shaft disorders, which are much more common, which is usually due to damage of the specific hair strands over time. So when I'm talking about hair shaft abnormalities, congenital or acquired, when you look microscopically at a strand of hair, what you'll notice is that it's not a smooth, straight shaft. You might see little breaks in the hair. You might see some little bunching up or coils or nodes on the hair shaft. And all of that ultimately leads to the hair not laying flat, not looking bright and vibrant, and sometimes being a lot more prone to breakage. Usually people with hair shaft abnormalities, whether they are acquired or they're something someone's born with, change the texture of the hair. So most hair shaft abnormalities will look like frizzy, broken, frayed, or dull hair. And then specifically, when we're thinking about what the abnormality of a split end or trichoptilosis looks like, it is defined as a longitudinal splitting or fraying of the hair, particularly at the distal end. So this is proximal, close to the scalp. Distal is the ends of your hair. So you see the hair at the end actually split off into one or more pieces. I think a lot of people think of split ends happening at the very end of their hair, but what can happen, especially with repeated hair damage, is you can have breakage of the hair. So you have shorter hairs, and then those can also develop split ends, and that can make the hair look particularly frizzy or be much harder to tame and style. So how do split ends actually occur? And this is somewhat theoretical. This is what we think occurs based on the data that we have available. So when you comb or brush dry hair, as the brush or comb reaches the ends of your hair, what happens is that very end of the hair starts to wrap around the comb teeth or the bristles of the brush. And that little end force, when you pull it through your hair, can actually snap or fracture the hair and cause it to split. So your hair is not just one strand. When you look microscopically, it has numerous layers and the central area is called the cortex. And you essentially crack or snap the cortex when you put those hard forces on the end of your hair. And I'll talk more about ways to prevent split ends at the end of this video, but you might've heard that you should kind of brush your hair from the bottom and then kind of work your way up. And the main reason for that is so that you're not exerting this massive force on the end of your hair that's going to be more likely to give you split ends. And then you can probably deduce from all of this that the better shape your hair is in, the more healthy it is, the less likely it is to split and fray. So why do people get split ends? And I was kind of alluding to this. It's usually due to repeated trauma to the hair shaft. And that can be chemical trauma, which I'll talk a little bit more about, or physical trauma from things like brushing and combing. Actually, when we run experiments on split ends and are trying to sort of induce split ends in hair or cause them for the sake of experimentation, repeated brushing of the hair is the easiest way to get split ends. So let's get a little bit more specific on ways that you might be damaging your hair that could lead you to be more prone to split ends. So chemical treatments are one of the main ways you can damage your hair. That includes bleaching as well as just color treating in general without bleach. Bleach, of course, we know is bad. Color treatments also though can affect the integrity of the hair because in order to get that color to stick into the hair, you essentially have to lift up the little shingles or protective armor on the outside of the hair for that color to take. Another way people damage their hair is with friction. So as I talked about before, aggressive brushing or combing of the hair, but this also includes things like towel drying your hair or wearing tight hairstyles or elastics. Of course, heat is known to damage hair. And of course there are ways you can safely apply heat to your hair so that it is less damaging, but whether that's blow drying, which is particularly damaging because you're not only heating the hair, but you're also whipping it around and any type of other physical trauma can be problematic or using something like a curling iron or straightener can also cause hair damage. Ultraviolet light or UV radiation is another way to damage your hair. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a dermatologist, but UV light, of course, we know causes problems in your skin, but it can also make your hair more fragile and more prone to breakage. And then lastly, and I almost didn't want to put this in here because I don't want to discourage people from using anti-dandruff shampoos, but there is some evidence that anti-dandruff shampoos containing active ingredients like ketoconazole and selenium sulfide may do a little bit of damage to the hair shaft and make it a little bit more fragile. Now, I will say we don't know if that's due to the 
active ingredient or the overall formulation of those products, but it's just something to keep in mind. And the key here really is just to use these anti-dandruff shampoos correctly. So rather than focusing on the middle and the ends of the hair, they really should be placed on the scalp where the dandruff actually exists. All right, now let's move on to split end prevention and treatment because that's probably what you're here for. One thing I wanna make really clear though is that there's no way to permanently fix an end that has already split. Now you can temporarily bond that hair back together and I'll talk about products to do that, but just know that if your hair is split, it's going to stay that way until it's cut off. One way to temporarily repair a split end is to use a product that contains a polyelectrolyte complex. Essentially something that contains a polyelectrolyte complex is a formula that has a cationic or positively charged polymer and an anionic or negatively charged polymer. And when those are applied to the hair, they act like little magnets. You have a negative force and a positive force and they essentially whoop, bring the split end together. Now that will be disrupted with things like shampooing or aggressive styling like brushing or combing, but you can get this really temporary, very nice sealing of the split ends. So the two main ingredients you're looking for when you're trying to decide if a formula has a polyelectrolyte complex is something called polyquaternium 28. That's your positively charged ion. And then you're looking for something called PVM slash MA copolymer, which is your negatively charged polymer. These are the most common ingredients that we see in a polyelectrolyte complex, but I'm not a hair chemist. There might be new ones in development, and I honestly hope there are. So one product I really like that contains this polyelectrolyte complex is the Oribe Split End Seal. So this is a really lovely hair serum that you apply to damp hair, and you essentially let it dry down. You can style however you want. You can let it air dry, or you can heat style your hair afterward. If you like to use heated styling tools, this is also really nice because it also affords you some heat protection. And a little bit goes a long way with this. You don't need a ton of it, and as you can imagine, when you're applying it, you're really going to focus it mostly on the ends of your hair. And one question I often get when I'm talking about split ends or talking about hair care is whether bond repair treatments like Olaplex or K18 can fix a split end. And no, they cannot. They can fortify your hair, but they are not going to make a split end that you already have look better. Now, the most definitive thing you can do to fix your split ends is to get a haircut and cut those split ends off. It's why we often talk about getting regular hair trims. It's not because that makes your hair grow faster, but it cuts off that dead or fraying hair so that the hair shaft has better integrity and is able to grow longer. And something that's kind of interesting to note is people who have blunt or straight across hairstyles are more prone to split ends. So if you're really worried about split ends, you struggle with damaged hair, having a style where your hair is tapered and there's different lengths is actually protective. Now, when we're talking about preventing split ends, the number one thing you can do is to minimize how much you are manipulating your hair. So like I discussed in the beginning with brushing or combing, you wanna make sure that you're working in small sections, starting at the bottom and then working your way up towards the root so that you're not generating this really intense force that breaks the hair at the end. And a lot of people will ask, well, is it better to brush brush your hair when it's wet or brush your hair when it's dry. Your hair is technically more fragile when it's wet, but studies actually show that when you brush your hair when it's dry, that makes you more prone to split ends overall. Whereas when you brush your hair when it's wet, that leads to just overall breakage and damage. So really you can't win. And the goal here is no matter when you're brushing your hair, whether it's wet or dry, you're always being really careful and gentle and taking your time. Aside from avoiding the obvious friction, like combing and brushing, you also want to avoid touching your hair or playing with it too much and particularly avoid splitting your own split ends. I remember being like really bored in seventh grade and just sitting in math class and splitting my own split ends, which is, you know, not the best way to spend your time. Another way to minimize friction on your hair is to use silk pillowcases and silk scrunchies. Those have decreased frictional forces compared to something like cotton, for example. And so it's really going to slip over your hair and reduce the damage. I've talked about how much I love silk pillowcases so many times on this channel. I have a bajillion different brands. Slip is probably my go-to. I love their scrunchies and their pillowcases. If you're hearing me talk about how to be gentle on your hair and you're like, okay, but my hair is very prone to tangle, so I really do need to comb or brush through it, then I totally recommend adding a detangler to your hair care routine. One of my all-time favorite detanglers, and it's actually a UV protectant and a heat protectant as well, is the Unite 7 Seconds Detangler. Every time I post about this on my Instagram, I get so many DMs like, I use this, I love this, I use this, I love this, I use this on my kid, I use this after surfing. It is such a versatile product, and I think really most people could benefit from having this in their hair hair care routine. So I use this in a couple different ways. After I shower and I sort of have gently towel dried my hair, I will just sort of spray it 
roots to ends and evenly distribute it. It's almost like a leave-in conditioner, but much lighter, but it still leaves that nice shine on the hair. And then you can let your hair air dry or you can heat style it afterward. This also can be applied to dry hair. And I really like to do this if you're going swimming or you're going in the ocean where your hair is gonna be exposed to things like salt water and UV damage, which can also be problematic, or chlorine. You essentially just spray it on dry hair. Your hair is gonna be getting wet anyway, and it acts as a protectant. When it comes to applying friction to the hair, you also wanna be careful with towel drying. A traditional bath towel can be very rough on the hair and it's also quite heavy, so it can pull and tug at the hair and lead to breakage that way. I love hair towels that help absorb additional moisture or water from the hair. One of my all-time favorites is the Crown Affair hair towel. It's really big, but very light. So it's great if you have a lot of hair and even if you don't have a lot of hair, it's great at removing that moisture and it's super comfortable. The added value of a hair towel is that it doesn't just not add additional friction to your hair, but it also will reduce your heat styling time. It'll make your hair air dry or blow dry faster so that you don't have to apply as much damage to it later on in your styling routine. Another thing you can do to protect your hair is to wear it up. And I know this is really counterintuitive because all the time you hear people talking about how you shouldn't wear tight hairstyles. And that's true. We don't want tight hairstyles, but actually wearing your hair back and up prevents a lot of friction. It prevents you from playing with it. It prevents it from whipping around in the wind or getting in little knots or tangles in your shirt collar. So it's actually very protective to wear your hair up. You just wanna do it loosely and gently. I think claw clips are great for this. I'm so glad that these are like fully back on trend. Some of my favorite claw clips are by The Crown Affair. They're these mini clips. They're gorgeous, they're durable. They have these internal teeth that help grip the hair. So if you have really slippery or fine hair, I think they are Perfect, yes, they are a little bit of an investment, but since I bought these, I almost use no other like hair clips and I feel like I'd rather have fewer, better things. Now, if you have more hair, more voluminous hair, curly hair, dense hair, thick hair, those clips are going to be too small. So I also really like the teletize clips. These are also super durable and are a great way to be able to just clip all of your hair up and back and away from your face. You can also do things like loose low braids or low buns. You just don't wanna be straining and pulling your hair back tightly. Another thing you may want to avoid is applying small hair elastics to the base of your hair. So if you're wearing things like pigtails, Dutch braids, anything where you're putting little hair ties at the ends, that's where your hair is the most damaged and of course the most prone to split ends. So avoiding that is ideal. Now, of course, if you wanna wear your hair like that from time to time, that's fine. But if it's an everyday style, you're much more likely to experience split ends over time. I just have a few more hair care practices to really help you protect your hair from damage and reduce split ends. When it comes to shampoo, and I'm talking to my patients, for example, about how to wash their hair, something that I think is so important to note, and of course it seems obvious when you say it out loud, but I think a lot of people don't really think about this, is shampoo is a scalp wash. You really wanna be focusing your shampoo on your scalp and at your roots, where you have that dead skin cell, sebum, product build up the most heavily. Now, of course, you can let the shampoo wash over your hair, especially if you use texturizing sprays and hairsprays. Of course, you have product on the rest of your hair that needs to be removed, but you don't need to do aggressive shampooing to remove that. And then of course, you always, always, always want to follow up any shampooing session with conditioner. And even if you're not shampooing your hair every time you wash it, adding a little bit of conditioner, at least to the ends, is going to help protect your hair from damage. I don't think I have any like all-time favorite shampoos and conditioners. I tend to change this up quite a bit, but I do have a conditioning mask that I use all the time and recommend to a lot of different people. And that is the Virtue Flourish Thickening and Hydrating Mask for thinning hair. And the reason I recommend this so much is I feel like people who have thin hair, so if maybe you have mature hair and it's gotten thinner over time or you just struggle with this, avoid conditioning their hair or avoid using masks because they're worried it's going to weigh their hair down or make their hair greasy. And this one does not do that. Now, of course you can use this mask if you have thicker hair as well. And the other reason I like this mask is you only have to leave it in for a few minutes, so three minutes, to get the full effects. And that's just nice from a convenience standpoint. You don't have to leave it in for 10 or 20 minutes to get the full conditioning effects. I think of conditioner as serving two main purposes. One is to impart a positive charge on the hair because a lot of surfactants or shampoos that you're washing your hair with are negatively charged. And if you just leave a negative charge on the hair, it can often feel dry, look sort of frizzy or staticky. So that positive charge coming from the conditioner helps tamp that down and smooth things out. The other thing a conditioner does is it coats the hair. It is a protective coating that makes the hair shafts much smoother so that they slide past one another and don't get knotted or tangled. That's another reason why I also like hair oils. 
So in addition to shampooing on your scalp, conditioning every time you shampoo, using a hair oil as part of your regular hair care routine can protect you from damage in multiple ways. So most hair oils that you buy on the market are not just oil. It's not like this is coconut oil or argon oil. Many of them have silicones in them, and those are just slippy molecules that coat and protect your hair. And silicone, I can't say this enough, is not bad for your hair. Aside from decreasing friction, a lot of these hair oils are also designed to be heat protective. And anytime you're adding more protection to your hair, the better. One of my favorite healing oils of all time, and I've discussed this so many times on this channel, is the Virtue Healing Oil. I love this one so much because it's very lightweight. And if you have fine hair and you're worried about hair oils making your hair look greasy or heavy, this doesn't do this. Plus it has this really nice light coconut scent, which to me is just so beachy and heavenly. Now I think a lot of people are underusing their hair oils where they are only applying them when they are styling their hair or only when they wash their hair. But I think hair oil should really be applied every single day. It doesn't have to be applied from your scalp all the way to your ends, but pretty much every day I'm taking three to five drops of hair oil, distributing it in my palms and just sort of raking it through the bottom parts of my hair because you have oil up at your scalp that's sort of keeping the hairs closer to your head, nourished and protected. But as you get further away, those hairs kind of need a little bit more love and that's where hair oil really comes in. And then the final thing you can do to protect your hair from damage and reduce your chance of getting split ends is sun protection for your hair. One thing that's great is a lot of hair care products now have UV protection in them. So like that Unite 7 Second Detangler that I talked about earlier has a UV protectant in it, but also just wearing a hat and keeping your hair up and back when you're in the sun is also so helpful and kind of an undervalued thing. So one of the easiest ways to protect your hair with a hat is if you're like a baseball cap type of person, which is not my favorite for protecting your skin, but is good for for hair is just wear it over your scalp. So kind of ears and above are protected. And then you can pull your hair back and wear it in like a low bun. And that's really going to reduce UV exposure. Or if you're wearing a wide brim hat, you're going to have more broad coverage and that's protective of your hair as well. So those are my top tips for preventing and correcting split ends. I hope this video was helpful for you. Do you have any go-to split end treatments? Put them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.